What's good? This is Noah from High Snob, and we are here with Lindsay Jordan from Snail Mail, or of Snail Mail, or you are Snail Mail. Right? Yeah, either way. Yeah? Yeah. And we're in New York. This is your second day here? Or how long have you been here? Second day, yeah. Where do you live now? Ellicott City with my parents. Oh, so you're still in b -more? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, I lived in New York for two months. How was that? <laughs> uh, I lived in a place that was like ridden with cockroaches and, oh my and like God. lots of men and just like, yeah, it was just it, loud. Where were you? What? Crown Heights. Oh. Um, and the place kind of smelled like dead body. Oh my just, God. And it was so expensive. I was like, I, I'm not ready to leave the warm embrace of my parents. Yeah. What's so. that like living with your parents and like being a rock star? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's cool. My parents are really nice and, and like forgiving and, and really lenient. Um, and like it feels really, when I come home after like a really long tour, it just feels really forgiving and just yeah. like sweet. They, they like, um, they like get my favorite candy and stuff when yeah. I get home and like have it out. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I just come, I come in quietly at night. Gotcha. And I, uh, I respect their house and then it's all good. All right, so let's take it back to like you being a smaller child yeah in Baltimore <laughs> <laughs> let's say what you got your first guitar when you were what, like five five how, how does that even like what you were just like I want a guitar kind of just saying it like you wanted something or music was already something you were like I'm, I'm about this life I think music was like it was like already like really big in my life and I just my sister was into music and like not playing it but like listening to it and, yeah. and I was always like really interested in it and I think just like the early 2000s movies with like like I remember like School of Rock and like Freaky yes. Friday and I was like okay like Lindsay Lohan with the Telecaster I was like yeah. I really want that to be me um, and I was like really really determined to get that guitar and learn how to play it and then I just like never really put it down yeah and yeah you talked about your sister yeah and uh, what like Paramore concert yeah and you didn't know women could be in bands yeah I don't know that's crazy so I don't know how, time. like, yeah, I mean, it was at the time, the time I really liked, like, All Time Low and, like, what, like, AFI and, like, Fall Out Boy and all that stuff, and I didn't, I mean, it just wasn't on my radar. radar. I knew, like, Avril Lavigne and stuff could be, like, a solo artist. Yeah. And I knew, like, Hilary Duff could, and I, I knew you could, like, be a pop star, but, yeah, I, not till I was at that Paramore show did I realize, like, you can just, you can, like, front a band. Yeah. Or, like, be, be in a band and, and then, like, be part of a group. It, it's, like, weird. It's, it's hard to believe that I didn't really have That's anything so in my life. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, like, something you have to, I guess, seek out. Yeah. Or did. Yeah. So, boom, you leave the Paramore show. Are you writing at this point? No. Or did that kind of make you want to get into your bag? I think it, writing? yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> that was, like, I remember specifically wanting to, like, go for it at that mm. point and, and I mean like years went by before I really like went for it yeah, yeah. but I, I didn't really see it as being like viable until then and then I started really writing like for real when I was like 12 or 13 and then making snail mail songs when I was like 14 and that was this first EP that I made on GarageBand and then deleted yeah but if you scour the internet deep enough it's around and snail mail what is what is that <laughs> I don't know you don't I know? think like I think like the way it's used in like postage, <laughs> mail terms is yeah. like, I guess is like to foil like texting and emailing to be yeah. like, this is, it's slow. And yeah. it's like, you know, sending letters through the mail. Um, but I don't know why I used it as a band name. I thought it was like catchy and, and just like kind of like cute and it like rolls name. off the tongue. Yeah, it's yeah. memorable. And I was just playing DIY like house shows when I came up with it. And I was like, this will be like, so no one has to be like, there's so many like girl names yeah. out in the world. I just thought it'd be easier, and then I never really thought anything would happen, and now I'm stuck with it. Boom. So let's get into maybe you know to, into habit now. Cool. So you're in school at this point. Yeah. Playing hockey. Yeah. And making music. Yeah. That's a lot to yeah. do as a high school student. What is that like? What was your day to day like? Uh, I was like a really dedicated hockey player. That yeah. was like my. Um, and I started when I was pretty young, and, and by the time I was in high school, I cared a lot less, and I think I'd just been like, beaten down emotionally and physically enough yeah. by it, that I was just like, I don't wanna hang out with these people anymore. Like, everyone was like, all right. <laughs> and like, mm. it was like, you know, it's like the like, real masculine, like, and I was at the point where I was like, okay, I'm like, gay. I like, 
I don't know. Like I'm like here and like I don't I don't want to hang out with these dudes anymore. Yeah. Um, and girls. I mean, the girls on the team sucked too. <laughs> like everybody sucked. Yeah. And I was just like, and, and but just by the time that that I was in high school, yeah, I wasn't taking it seriously anymore. And uh, yeah, so I was like doing that, and then <sighs> I was a pretty good student. <laughs> I like did all my homework, mm -hmm. um, studied a lot, and then the music kind of was like the only thing I really like really cared about. Yeah. Like I, I. Uh, I was going through the motions for sure with everything else and like trying to do a good job, but music, yeah. That was like when I discovered that I really cared about songwriting and it was like a really good outlet for for like my emotions and just I had a lot of them at the time and yeah. <laughs> I still do. write like after school or like on yeah. weekends? Yeah, or like in class, if they sit in guitar class or like sometimes I would like skip class and then like go into my uh, guitar class and like be like, oh yeah, I have like, my teacher like told me to like go do this or yeah. like I would like lie just to like lie. have the guitar room yeah. and just like write. I think that's how I wrote that song Deep Sea. It's just like in the guitar room during like skipping class. Nice. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but mostly just in my house after school. And what kind of goes through your head when you're like, wow, wait, this is what I want to do, but it's actually like becoming something that I can do? Uh, I think like end of senior year, after I had applied to all these colleges and like picked one, I was like just about to commit and I was going to move to New York for it. And I had to like make the decision if I wanted to like half ass both music and school. Right. Or if I wanted to just like whole ass one of them <laughs> yeah. um, and and yeah I mean I I think it was just a matter of like is this viable do I want to get behind in school if it's not viable can I keep making music will people care next year um, will I care next year can I do this touring thing uh, yeah I mean there's so much to consider and it's such a it can be such a, like a rocky road mm -hmm. but yeah I mean things have been going really well and I'm really happy I made the decision that I did being signed now does that change your writing process yeah definitely yeah. i think um as far as i know like matador is is cool about like the creative process they haven't like pushed me in any direction but having a platform kind of does in its own way just like knowing that a lot of people are watching and listening and kind of trying to keep it individual and like personal is really hard and, and just like remembering that it's something that I do for myself mm -hmm. is really challenging because um, yeah there's more of an impact now when yeah. I write something about someone or like something specific and just being like oh yeah that person will hear it this time. One thing I'd like to ask um, I mean especially like in the office we actually we do listen to your music cool but we are usually around a lot of like hip-hop and just being in a very hip-hop centric world how do you feel being you know, a successful rock act. I love it. I mean, I like love just like being able to see like hip hop artists at our same festivals and stuff. And yeah. I think like there's a lot of like conversation about people being like, well, like, aren't you sad that like guitar rock isn't more prevalent? And I'm like, no, like it's like, it's cool to be able to do it because it's like always what I've done. But like, it's so cool to just like watch people make music that I like that I can't, like that I don't have any frame of reference for making mm. myself. And like just being surrounded by it is so inspirational. Like, and I feel like now, fans, you know, especially with like all these streaming sites and everything, like, you listen to everything. Yeah. So like the fan is literally just rock, and then it's rap, and then it's country, then it's like yeah, classical. Yeah, I, I really like, I like the variety. It's the best is like when you're songwriting. It's just like for me, it's just not listening to any music that sounds like my own because I just like don't want to be like comparing in my head. And I feel like guitar music at some point all just blends together and. For me, like when I'm writing and I always am just like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm like taking notes right now or like thinking theory or like, yeah. and it just gets like stressful and I'm like, I just want to like, I just want to like listen. Yeah. And you seem like someone that really just cares about the music. Like I can tell that you really don't care about fame and yeah. <laughs> But now that you are in this world, are there any new things that you're into or habits that you've picked up since you've been like... 
Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I really like fashion. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, never thought that that would be part of my life, and I always kind of hoped it would. Mm -hmm. And being able to do, like, fashion stuff through music is, like... Sick. I've already done the chef's kiss twice in this interview, but it's chef's kiss, I love it. And, yeah. like, be able to wear clothes that, like, I definitely wouldn't be able to buy. Mm -hmm. It's cool, just, like, for, like, for shoots and stuff. And I mean, I always think it's interesting, because it's like, I mean, you know, you work this hard. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what's next for you? Or what are you doing right now, besides the tour? Uh, yeah. Or that's that's it? <laughs> right now, yeah, we're on this Always tour. We're doing doing um, just a little East Coast run, and then we go to Asia, like, right after. Oh, sick. Yeah. Been out there before? No. I'm so excited. That's and then, gonna be uh, crazy. And then we're doing another European run, and then we're playing MSG in February, which I'm really excited about, um, with Interpol and Car wow. Dead and I'm just trying to like, write. I really just want to like, I kind of, I have this like, me and my mom, I've like had this conversation a bunch of times. I really want to just like go to Northern Italy by myself and just oh, do sick. a writing retreat for like a month. Nice. But that's like dream level, not like plan level right now. So um, I'm trying to make that happen. That's a movie. Yeah. That's like a whole film. I'm trying to get Call Me By Your Named out yeah. there. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> well, you're cool. You too. Thanks for Thanks having me. Thanks for this. Yeah. Peace. That was the best thing I've ever said.